51 shark nets were installed in New South Wales beaches this morning despite calls to scrap the program. The state government claims replacement technology is not good enough yet. Joining me now live is Rob Harcourt, Professor of Marine Ecology at Macquarie University. Thank you so much for joining us. Look, this has been an ongoing debate, not just in New South Wales, but in other states across the country. Tell us firstly, what are the key concerns over shark nets? Oh, hi there. Okay. Yeah. Shark nets have been around since 1931, and uh, what they do is that they they don't people think that they block the beach off and so sharks can't get in or out. But what they do is they're actually fishing. So they're about um, you know 150 meters long and about 10 meters, uh, about six meters deep and about 10 meters of water. And so what they do is they're just fishing a beach, and that reduces shark numbers. And so they've been doing that for well, you know, nearly 100 years now, and. Um, of course, anything that comes through, you can see that there. So they're like a 50 meter size mesh, quite a large mesh. And then they, they turn them over and they have them in for the summer. And uh, they catch animals that are coming in or out of the um, of the beach. And of course, they're not always dangerous sharks. And that, that's where people get their concerns up. Okay, so then I guess how many animals that are not sharks are getting caught? What does the data tell us? Well, it's... It's really variable by year. So, you know, the last year there was only about 140 odd animals um, that were t t caught in the nets and they weren't all, uh, the, a lot of them were actually the target sharks, which are white sharks, tiger sharks and bull sharks. But we also get a few other animals that get caught, um, occasionally turtles, very rarely dolphins, um, grey nurse sharks at some of the beaches, which are an endangered species of shark, um, particularly place like Bondi where I surf, um, grey nurse sharks are, are more likely to get caught. There's a lot of grey nurse sharks close to um, the Bondi nets. And um, and they used to get quite a lot of rays, but they've, they've lifted the nets a little bit off the bottom, so we don't get so many of the rays anymore. Um, so the bycatch has actually gone down. They've, they've been trying to get it, make it as, uh, as green as possible, but um, people still don't want them going in. And yeah, I was watching them go in this morning as I was surfing. It has to be... Uh, well, that's it. Of summer. Sorry, go on. Absolutely. And 51 uh, shark nets uh, have now been installed this morning, as, as you said, you, you saw them um, go in. So how successful overall, though, are they in keeping people safe? So that's a really difficult question that people have been asking for a long time. And we, we do know that um, the number of people bitten at beaches before net nets went in was much, um, proportionally much higher, even though there's a lot more people using the beaches now. And um, we um, we do know that for the most part, you rarely get bitten at mesh nets, uh, mesh beaches, but it's not perfect. So people have been have been bitten at um, beaches with nets since the nets have been there, just not very many. So it's it arguably it could be quite a strong deterrent, um, just because there's a lot less sharks around because they've been fishing them. The New South Wales Premier says that new shark detection technologies are not a good replacement for the shark nets. So take us through what exactly is this technology that has been proposed? Yeah, actually, New South Wales is one of the world leaders in the new technologies. Um, the, ever, ever since Mike Baird was Premier, when he invested in the shark management strategy, they've really been very good at, at trying to look at all the different ways we can help reduce shark bites. So there's a number of different things. One of them is just tracking sharks. So um, what they do is that they attach either satellite transmitters or acoustic transmitters or both to um, two sharks and then they take them out to sea and they release them and then they see where they're going. And we actually have more sharks tagged off the east coast of Australia, whites um, in particular, than anywhere else in the world. So we've got phenomenal information on where these animals go and what are the drivers, you know, when whether it's cold water comes in, do they come in closer to shore, that sort of thing. And that's allowing um, the, the government with a number of different groups, including actually one of the people who works with me, to build models which can then predict when you're likely to be at risk at different beaches. Um, and so that's like a smart way of, of just working out where the sharks like to be and then you can do a risk assessment of whether or not you're going to get bitten. Another one that they use is that they use drones and the State governments invested millions of dollars in training surf lifesavers to um, and and providing drones to them so they can look for sharks because you know as everyone knows we're all getting buzzed by recreational drones all the time. You've got a, a bird's eye view literally of of the beach, and so when they're patrolling beaches, they can identify when there are sharks and spot them very well. And then the other thing they've done, and they've particularly put out a lot more in the last couple of years, is 
in Queensland, they were always using drum lines, which is a type of fishing. It's more selective than a net, than a gill net, um, but people were always concerned it would bring sharks close into shore because you're baiting uh, the, the the drum lines. They're essentially a, a, just a long line that um, hangs a bait off on, on a trace and then the animal's coming in. But a few years ago at Reunion Island, they invented what are called smart drum lines, which are a drum line that has a little boy on it and when a shark or any other animal takes the bait, it sends a message saying we've got something on the line and then you can send the operator out and they can actually retrieve the animal often um, most likely um, most often without it dying and then that's when they tag them and then they take them offshore and then those animals don't tend to come back to the beach and so you can rescue animals that you're not targeting like reindeer sharks and they can be released um, it's not perfect you know, animals can die but it's much less much more selective than than having the killing so those are the main approaches that we're trying. I think the modelling has got the greatest chance of success. It's not quite there yet, though. It's nearly there. Um, and I suspect that's why Chris Mins is a little bit reluctant to um, to pull the nets out quite yet. Yeah, I was going to say, especially given you've done so much research and it seems that this technology has been tried and tested. So when do you think it will be up to scratch? Oh, that's a very a very tricky question. I mean, I'm not the one making the decision to take the nets out of the water. I, I, I think the modelling is getting really good. It's at least at least another year before we're going to really be able to say, OK, when the conditions are like this, don't go in the water, you've got a good chance of being bitten. But partly because bites are still really rare. I mean, the fatalities are very, very rare. We only had a couple. We don't have any last year, a couple of the year before. Um, and even, so the, the numbers that we're working with are tiny. And the thing is that the fear of being bitten by a shark is much greater than the probability of being bitten by a shark. But that doesn't help if you're the person or who's, if one of your family members is bitten, it's a terrible tragedy and we want to avoid that. So I think it's, we've got this balance between allowing people to go in the water all the time and, and encourage them to do that without having to have a, an ecological cost of, of, of having to harm, you know, these magnificent animals that are, uh, we share the ocean with. An interesting conversation. Rob Harcourt, we have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. Been a pleasure, Danica.